Uh, and we saw that God really told Moses that he made sure he had some uh, luck. He didn't have everything he needed to fulfill his assignment. And for him, it was a problem. Matter of fact, he was arguing with God saying, hey, I cannot do what you want me to do. Moses said in Exodus 4.10, pardon your servant, Lord. Please send someone else. I am not equipped to do what you are calling me to do. Does anyone feel the same way? Does anyone feel, I do not have what it takes to do what God is showing me? Then if you feel that way, you are in a very good company. Moses, one of the biggest prophets. Matter of fact, I think he's probably the biggest prophet. Because talking about Jesus, they say he will come as a type of Moses. Talking about Moses, God said, when I speak to other prophets, it's through dreams, revelations. But Moses, I speak to him face to face. This is a person, God says, I have not found anyone who is patient as Moses. Moses was one of the biggest or favorite guys God used. But I don't think God has anyone who's favorite. He favorites all of us, but that's just to say that Moses was not a small guy in the hands of God. But he thought he could not, he was not qualified to do what God was telling him he wanted him to do. Why? Because he didn't count on God being a God of relationships. He thought, if God calls me to do something, I need to do all by myself. A lot of people today in leadership positions uh, think that way. They think that they have to do everything in the organization. If you are a CEO, if you are a manager, you do not have to do everything. Some people are not doing what God is calling them to do. Some people are not fulfilling their God-given destiny because of this problem. They do not understand that God is a God of relationships. God answering Moses said, what about your brother, Aaron the Levite? I know he can speak well. So God was telling him, your need is always trapped into someone else. And relationships are the best or the only way to get what we need from people. That's why I think when Jesus was asked, what is the biggest or the most important law? He said the law of relationships. Say, love God and love people. Oh, love God as you love God, you will love yourself and love people as you love yourself. He's talking about the three relationships you need to have. The first important relationship you need to have is with God. God is our creator. God is our source. Anything created needs to stay attached to the creator for it to live. That's why, for example, fish, for them to live, they have to stay in the water. Because when God was creating fish, he said, let the waters bring forth fish. That's why trees, plants, they need to stay attached to the ground. Because when God was creating them, he said, let the ground bring forth plants. Everything created needs to stay attached to the source, to where it comes from. Guess what God said before creating it? Let us make man in our own image, in our likeness. That means you came out of God. For you to live, you need to stay attached. Being attached to someone, being attached to something, that's the relationships we're talking about. That's the relationship. So the most important relationship to have on the earth is the relationship with God. Because he's our source. If you, don't have, if you do not have any personal relationship with your source, then you are dead. You may be surviving, but you're not living the life at the fullness. The second relationship you need to have is with yourself. Now, this may sound simple, but most of people have no relationship with themselves.
Most of people do not love themselves. They hate themselves. <laughs> this is one of the things that oppression does to people. Oppression makes you hate yourself. Most of people cannot stay by themselves for an hour. Most of people cannot stay in a quiet place. Most of people, a lot of people cannot be quiet and have a one-on-one -on -one with themselves. They always need music. Some people cannot stay in a room when it's quiet. A lot of people do not enjoy the company of themselves. That's why a lot of people don't know how to relate to others. Because you can only relate to people from the, at the same pace, at the same profound, at the same, you only love people, relate to people as much as you relate to yourself. That's why God said, love people as you love yourself. It's a law, but it's a principle. That's why relationships are really a mirror of who you are, of how you rate yourself. When you love yourself, do you know a lot of people who say, I don't feel loved? It's because they don't love themselves. It's very hard to love someone who doesn't love himself. And let me tell you, it's impossible to hate someone who does love himself. People should join you in loving you. When you are good at peace with yourself, my goodness, people just want to be around you. Have you ever met someone who's always complaining? There's some people who are professors and masters in complaint. Everything is wrong with their lives. How do you feel around these people? You do not want to stay a second with them. What we feel within us is what we give out. That's why it's so important to understand you have to, have to relate to God so you can relate to yourself. Why? Your worth or your value always comes from your manufacturer, for, from your creator. Let me use this example to express or to expand on this. A car is always the price of any car, the price of any cell phone, most of people use cell phones, is not set by the one who buy it. The, the value of anything is always set by the one who made it or created it. Your value does not come from people. Matter of fact, your value does not even come from your parents. You know, a lot of people their self-value comes from what their parents said. And some people didn't have a healthy relationship with their parents. Matter of fact, a lot of parents do not have a healthy relationship with themselves, so they transmit that to their kids. Guys, you don't understand how many people have a self-hate. We can see that in South Africa, as we having these people killing their own brothers. That's self-hate. When you love yourself, you love people. When you let properly to yourself, you let to people properly. Do you know people who have a very hard time to forgive others? they cannot forgive themselves. Most of people are held behind, cannot advance, because when, once they make one small mistake, everything falls down. These kind of people, they cannot forgive anyone. And when you forgive yourself, and by the way, you better know how to forgive yourself. 
because you will mess up so many times. The good news is God does not make it a big deal. God does not even ask you to explain why you messed up. He only asks you one thing, recognize you messed up. You do not even have to explain. <laughs> the Bible says, if you confess your sin, he forgives them and forget them. Confess means to homologate. Omorogeo, it comes from a Greek word, omorogeo. Omorogeo means to recognize. When God tells you, you have messed up with this situation, all you have to do is to say, yes, I recognize I messed up. That's all God wants. That's all he requires from you. He doesn't even need you to explain why. He knows why. He just needs you to say, I recognize I messed up. And that's it. Now, this may sound simple. Most of people cannot even get to that point. When they messed up, my goodness, everything falls down. God says, when you confess your sins, I forgive and forget them. Now, is this a free pass to sin? Not at all. Because when you sin, God is going to forgive you God is going to forget, but the consequences are still there. You will have to pay for your... God is not holding you accountable, but what you sow is what you reap. You go and steal money. God is going to forgive you, but you're going to go in prison if they caught you. You go and you sleep around, you get pregnant, that baby is going to be there, you're going to be responsible for that baby for the rest of his or her life. You go and lie, you lose a contract, God will forgive you, but the contract is gone. It's like when you miss an exit on a highway. When you miss an exit on a highway, it will take you extra energy to take the next exit and come back to where you are going. So God is going to forgive you, but you have to pay a price for you to come back where you are supposed to be. So it's not a free pass to sin. But what I'm saying is, it's not the end of the world either. So love yourself and be able to get to a point where you can forgive yourself. So you can love others and be able to forgive them. Very important in relationships to understand that relationships are so important, but the most important relationship to have is the relationship with God, then a relationship with you, a healthy relationship with God. Do you know, so a lot of people do not have a healthy relationship with God. I hear a lot of people saying, oh, I'm not religious, I just have a relationship with God. I always pause and say, can you explain or define what you mean? Because even religion is a relationship with God. When you say I have a relationship with God, you have to explain what a relationship is. The, relation, the health relationship you should have with God is your father. When Jesus came, the children of Israel had a relationship with God. But God was a very far God that would punish them if they breathed in the wrong way. The matter of fact, the children of Israel, in the time of Jesus, they killed him because he said God was his father. Now I know this concept of father, a lot of people cannot even relate to God from this concept because they do not understand. They did not have a good example of what a father is. And probably stay tuned because if that's your issue, we're going to deal with uh, these specific relationships and we talk, we're going to talk about fatherhood, what a father is, what a father is supposed to be. How do you relate to a father?
Because a lot of people cannot even relate to God from this father perspective because they don't know. You know, the Bible says that people, the people of God are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. Sometimes it's just because we don't know how to relate to God. That's why, for example, I'm saying when you mess up with God, it's... <clears throat> I'm being cautious to say it's not a big deal because it's really a big deal. But it's not that big. Only it's a big deal if you do not recognize, if you persist in your sin. 